Good afternoon, Julia. Thanks. You know my pronouns are they, them. How are you doing? Yeah. Um, thank you for telling me your pronouns. I use correct grammar. So the only, only thing I would need to refer you to is, very, to your face would be you, but I'm, I'm not being rude. You can choose your pronouns. You can choose what you want to call yourself, but you don't, have a, you don't get to require me to use incorrect grammar and factually incorrect things. You're not a plural. You're a, you're a, you're a one person and you're a, you're a female person. So I will use she and her. Thank you very much. I welcome the publication of the CAS report today, something that we commissioned, and it aligns with our approach on this issue. And that's that, of course, we must treat children who are questioning their gender with compassion and sensitivity, but we have to recognise that we need to move with extreme caution in these areas uh, because we just simply don't know the long term impacts of what this all means. And children's wellbeing is uppermost in our mind. And that's why we've acted on the interim findings previously, whether that's the NHS banning the routine use of puberty blockers or indeed the guidance that we gave to schools about how to treat these issues in those environments which again were warmly welcomed. I've been very consistent on this topic throughout my uh, career and I want to make sure that we consider this report carefully but we've already acted on the interim findings and as I said it's very much in uh, alignment with our way of thinking which is to exercise extreme caution on these issues because we simply do not know the long-term consequences and impacts.